Hi everybody, this is the Golden Era Bookworm. Today, I bring you my review on The Black Prince, My Life in Bodybuilding, Muscle vs. Hustle by Robbie Robinson. I got this book a while ago, and I have to say it's a great book. Just like the Draper series, especially like uh, Brother Iron, Sister Steel, I would say that it's not the same, but I had this same flavor that I gathered from Dave's uh, biogra biographical section. is very similar to Robbie's in this book, except that this is purely a biography of, uh, of the life of Robbie Robinson in bodybuilding. Robbie's book, I would say, is a very raw, unreserved, very deep and honest look at his life in and out of the bodybuilding stage. The first chapters deal with Robbie and his basic upbringing, growing up in Florida. Some would say that his family was quite poor, however we learn that he had a very clean start at life and that his mother cooked him wholesome organic food. Although his father was a drunk and racism was rampant back in his time, these experiences molded Robbie into, I guess, becoming a better man than his father and than the examples that he saw around him. He first watched Jack LaLanne's shows and was hooked. Uh, he, actually, he actually had thalassemia. He's, still, or he's, it's, he's got a genetic disease called thalassemia. And I guess doing these Jack LaLanne workouts and when he found his rusty uh, weights and began his own little gym, started in, you know, started as his own little home gym, he started on improving his physique and it made him feel good. Uh, as I said, he collected, uh, he collected scrap uh, from the junkyards to make his own gym and he sent out for George Jowett's and uh, Charles Atlas's courses to learn bodybuilding exercises. Eventually, Robbie entered the AAU contests and although he would only uh, win the body parts because of the racism, um, he would never actually um, uh, win and his placings were always non-reflective, you could say, of his superior physique. Robbie, however, didn't care. He goes on to mention how he made a white friend called Richard Baldwin, whom allowed him to come into his house to read his muscle builder collection with his friends. And, I mean, this was unheard of back then, to allow a black man or a group of black men into a white man's house. So, <laughs> um, After being drafted into the U.S. Army, uh, Robbie avoids the Vietnam War and he begins to win some competitions including the 1974 Mr. Southern Eastern United States as well as placing first in the Mr. Greater Florida and the Mr. Florida. Soon after, Joe Wader invites him out to California where he trains firstly in Pasadena at Bill Pearl's gym and stays with, Jay, uh, with Dave Jones, another black man the time. No offense, of course. Um, he later entered and won the 1975 Mr. America, uh, which was run by the IFBB, uh, this competition in particular, and he joins the Waiter crew. Bill Pearl and Dave Johns and many others had previously warned him about the Waiters, but Robbie didn't really uh, listen to all this advice, and instead he basked in the glory of training at Joe Gold's gym, sealing his iconic status as we know it as one of the Golden Era Waiter Boys. However, this all sounds really great, but there is a really dark side to this book. That's why it's called Muscle vs. Hustle. And it really, you really start seeing it uh, as you flick through. By the way, there's some great photos here of, of Robbie. I mean, I'm assuming that's his home in the very beginning. And his first wins. That's him holding his son up. That's the war, as I mentioned, the Vietnam War. He had a lot of problems at home, which is why this chapter was called The War at Home and the One Abroad. 
um, Arnold and the Waiter Boys, right? Here's where it really starts. It's a great shot of the Robbie front double biceps. And really, it's these middle chapters here from Black Boy to Black Prince. And they, they coined him the Black Prince, uh, the Waiters. So I'll just continue. So, um, however, as I mentioned, uh, Pearl and John's were right. Uh, Waiter never offered him a contract, so that they had warned him, and that's what I mean by they were right. They, they warned him not to go, and later, um, they, they were right. I mean, Waiter didn't offer them a contract, uh, didn't offer him, Robbie, a contract, and he barely scraped to make ends meet, working at the Waiter warehouse and earning peanuts, really, on photo shoots. Uh, he later won the Mr. World, 1975, and admits to having won with only one shot of Prima Bolin Depot. He actually won all those AAU contests I mentioned earlier, drug free, as well as the 1975 IFBB Mr. America. He wins the Mr. World IFBB 1975 with one shot of Prima Bolin two weeks out before competition. So, so Robbie is one of these guys who really was natural. I mean, you could say that he was mostly natural. He only took uh, steroids 12 weeks, 12 weeks out from competition and he constantly says it in this book. It's fantastic. Uh, and most of the other time he actually just stayed natural the whole year. Um, it's amazing as, as, I, as I read this book how, how Robbie re literally was toe-to-toe -to -toe with the weight of boys and still winning basically as a natural. Robbie was actually 205 as a natural and ripped with 20 inch arms and a 28 inch waist. He was an absolute phenomenon and he still is if you see his videos and his uh, photos at his mature age of 70 something now. He's still fantastic. Uh, all of this was to change his whole natural status as he started to cycle as everyone had to follow protocol, especially if you were a waiter boy. Robbie's cycle was 200 milligram shot of Deca Durabolin, B12 and a calcium shot every two weeks with Waiter's doctor from 12 weeks out before competition. Although Robbie was getting much recognition on the cover and inside articles of Muscle Builder magazine and performing in many bodybuilding exhibitions, he goes on to describe how he was cheated by Joe Waiter in the famous incident where Joe had asked Robbie to have... Robbie's upper body sculpted, only to have his head chopped off and replaced by Joe Wader's head, which became the famous bronze statue of Joe, Joe Wader, known as the Wader Bust. You may have seen it in the 80s and 90s magazines, where, uh, where uh, Wader has his arms crossed uh, across his chest, looking slightly to a side. That's actually Robbie's chest and arms, with Wader's head on top, right? Robbie goes on to win shows, many shows, in 1970, from 1976 to 1979. And actually this book mentions all his wins. They are listed at the end, all his titles that he won, especially in the IFBB. And uh, although still not under contract, he is promoted by the waiters in their magazines and by the IFBB around the world through exhibitions, especially in Europe. However, Robbie constantly spoke his mind about the IFBB and the waiters, which landed him a two-lifetime ban from IFBB competitions. Uh, Robbie moved to Europe and, I mean, later, or shortly after, he was reinstated back into the IFBB because, um, I mean, the, it didn't look right that the waiters were using his photos and he wasn't appearing in competitions, uh, in the IFBB competitions, that is. He eventually wins his first Masters Olympia against Lou Ferrigno. And if you've, seen, if you've seen the movie of Lou Ferrigno, Stand Tall, you will see Robbie's uh, win at the Masters. And he looks rock hard, paper thin skin. It's unbelievable at his age. Unbelievable. He also wins a 50s, over 50s Masters uh, IFBB Mr. Olympia and then he retires. I love Robbie's tell all story. In this book, you can feel his uh, sadness, but 
his iron determination also shines through uh, and his strong stance against the injustices that he's faced the racism the waiters everything this is such an honest book that once you start reading it it is really hard to put down uh, one other thing that radiates i guess from this particular book is that Robbie also portrays his spiritual side. He pours his soul out in this book. You can really see uh, how he really loves bodybuilding. It literally runs through his veins. His art truly is his life. So I say long live the Black Prince, Mr. Lifestyle himself, the legend, Robbie Robinson. I highly, highly recommend this book and I give it a double thumbs up. Just like I have to Draper's books. This is the only book that I know of that Robbie has come out with. He's come out with booklets too back in the 70s. But this is his only real book. It's a great book. And I highly recommend it. So, that was my review of The Black Prince. My life in bodybuilding, muscle versus hustle. You can get it on Robbie Robinson's website. Uh, you can just look up Robbie Robinson and it'll come up. His website will come up. He also sells, um, I think now, shirts and singlets with a great double biceps pose, front double biceps pose with his signature. It's awesome. I want to get my one. I want to get one myself. I've actually got his DVD built. It's also awesome. Nothing like watching the old, uh, uh, the golden era bodybuilders work. I mean, he shows how he does these exercises. He explains them. It's fantastic. There's also some old footage in there. Yeah, um, I think that's all that I own from his webpage. But yeah, it's a, it's a great read. Go get it. So this is the Golden Era Bookworm signing out. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Share it. Let your friends know. And yeah, I'll see you soon with some more reviews on books and magazines. See ya.